looking it up. You're late, bang. Flew a bit off course tonight. Let's say goodbye to Laura. She's upset, I suppose. It's a waste of time, you know this. French Air Service doesn't need us. We're back here in a couple of weeks' time, no doubt. Where is it then? Uh, there. Verve sur Meuse. Verve sur Meuse. What's that mean then? The widow on the Meuse. That's cheerful. I just found out from Triggers where we're going. Verve sur Meuse. Well, where is the blessed place? There. Oh, good, good, good. It's on the bend of the river. So even you should be able to find it. Listen, we're off in half now, so you better start getting paid. Oh, by the way, Lorna Collins sends her regards. Where the blazes are we going to this place? That's what I want to know. I have a strong feeling that Triggers doesn't know either. <laughs> and I'll bet he's put out of taking orders from a frog. A frog? Oh, really, Michael? The French allies, you know. In fact, my great-grandfather owned a chateau on the Loire. God knows what he did with it. And come to think of it, the very name... Um, Gillian. Gillian, of it, is directly <laughs> well, descended well, from... Well, well, well. I can understand Alan not wanting to go. I mean, he's going to miss his occasional visits to his little nurse. But I really don't know why you're so upset. I should have thought you'd welcome the change of scene. Michael. Is there nothing on God's earth upon which you do not have a theory? I was wounded, remember? I was nursed by those dainty, capable hands. I know where her true affections lie. Mm, well, it's all over now, so don't you start resurrecting it, all right? I shan't need to. Lorna is Aries, do you see? He's what? Her birthday's in the middle of April, so you better watch out. She'll stop at nothing despite her timid lies to get what she wants, or I should say, who she wants. Michael, Charles. That, they didn't leave. Oh, champing of the bit. Good. Where's Alan? Uh, he just got back, so he flew a little off course. By the base hospital, I mm. suppose. Right, now, if anybody drops out, make your way to Verve Sir uh, Mers. Mers by the quickest possible route, all right? Now, we're going to Verve Sir uh, Mers as a special flight, so they'll expect us at least to be professional, all right? Now, it's up to each one of us to show that we are. Let's show the French. The Royal Flying Corps is, um, uh, well... Yes. So this Captain mm. Bouchala... Um... Yes, we'll be flying under Captain Bouchala's command. Yes. Well, we're all rather anxious, sir, to know why the blazes were going to this, um, to, to, um... Verbs Verb so much. Oh, you know, so am I. Contact! 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 No good, sir. I'll have to change the magneto. Captain Trigger, sea flight. How do you do? Captain Bouchala, your liaison officer. At your service, Captain. How do you do? One of my pilots has been delayed. I don't expect it'll be very long. I think another of your pilots has some difficulty also.
Madame, je vous présente Capitaine Trigger. Monsieur, Monsieur le Capitaine. Oh, le Capitaine euh, euh, Starling. Enchanté, madame. Oh, il parle bien le français, hein? Oh, l'anglais. Second lieutenant farmer. Monsieur. Madame Tomonier and her daughter will be looking after you during your stay at Birdsoul. Merci, c'est très kind of you. Marie-Hélène, c'est ma fille. This is madame's daughter. Monsieur. Monsieur. Bonjour. Monsieur le capitaine. Oui. Les bagages. Oui, maman. Ah, oh, l'ennemi. Oh, pas de médaille. Personne, pas de médaille. What did you say? Madame's asking why none of us have any medals. Yes, I gather that. Perhaps you'd be kind enough to explain to Madame we don't attach quite the same importance to medals in the Royal Flying Corps. Il dit qu'il n'y a pas d'importance à gagner des médailles. Vraiment? Ah non, il faut tuer les Allemands et gagner beaucoup de médailles. What did you say? Madame wants us to shoot down Germans and win lots and lots of medals. Easier said than done. Comme ça, hein? Beaucoup de médailles. Il faut gagner beaucoup de médailles, capitaine. Alors, je vous fais une tasse de café. I think it will be valuable for us to talk about operations, captain. While your officers find their quarters. Yes, certainly, certainly. She uh, makes a lot of noise, huh? Oh, yes, no matter. No, thank you very much. No. Well, I, I must confess not to being as fully briefed as I'd wish. Uh, my general issued instructions for us to transfer to this sector and left immediately for a conference in England. <laughs> Consequently, you I... You don't know why you are here? No idea. And I must confess, neither do I. Oh, God, it's typical. You see, I'd expected different machines to the ones that you are flying. Special flight. I did not expect these rather old-fashioned reconnaissance machines. With all due respect to you and your pilots, I really don't think you can be of any help to us. Help? Help with what? Fighting this new monoplane. The Eindecker? Yes. They were first sighted in the sector a few weeks ago. They are a formidable machine. They carry a gun that fires straight ahead through the arc of the propeller. Yes, we know what they're like. We've been fighting them for five months. How many Eindeckers have you shot down? Uh, well, we don't uh, pretend to be able to shoot them down. Rather, we try to avoid them shooting us down. All right, Captain, how many Eindeckers in your sector? More than enough. And the numbers are increasing. Yes, but um, what are they doing? Um, there's nothing happening in this sector of the front. They fly on their side of the lines. They don't trouble us, provided we leave them alone. At the same time, I cannot recommend the use of your B-2s against them, in spite of your experience. If you've no need of us, we're not anxious to stay. Perhaps it'd be better if we went back to St. Marie, where we certainly are needed. Very well. Of course, we shall have to gain approval from headquarters first. If, in the if meantime... my general wants us to help you deal with those Eindeckers, that's exactly what we shall do. Oh, remaining member of my flight, I think, Mr. Galian. I didn't think he'd be long. The bends in the river here can be confusing. If perhaps he is inexperienced in navigation... Oh, no, 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 Mr. Mr. Galian's my most experienced pilot. He will need all his experience, I think. He is about to fly over enemy lines.
we should carry out dawn to dusk patrols singly in exactly the same way as we did at St. Marie. Starting tomorrow, I shall take the first patrol. Now, I want good post-flight reports, please. Very important we pool our information so we know exactly how the Andek is operating and why. And as quickly as possible, please. A very good reason that Captain Bouchelard made it abundantly clear to me he'd be delighted to see the back of us. <laughs> Frankly, from his general attitude to our rival, I'd be equally delighted to see the back of him. Sounds as if we're not seeing uh, eye to eye with the French air service. Yes, well, I didn't regard myself as prejudiced against the French, and I must admit that Captain Bouchelard it's the epitome of everything I dislike about the French. Arrogant little gall. That's that way of looking down his nose at you. <laughs> ah, you are all here. Good. I trust you find your quarters satisfactory? Oh, yes, very comfortable, thank you. Home from home. Excellent. Now, you're uh, Mr. Galeon. A British machine was seen in combat with the enemy about two hours ago. I have just received the report. What happened? It was only a brief sighting. There was much cloud. But I think we must assume it was your fourth machine. It looked as if he was shot down. He may have landed this side of the lines. That is unlikely. We would have heard. I'm sorry. There it is. I was thinking, since this is your first evening here, perhaps we should amuse ourselves a little. Do you agree? Sorry. Uh, Mr. Galleon's a friend of mine. Ah. Then you need, uh, how do you say, cheering up. I think an evening in Paris would be valuable, don't you, Captain? Paris is 150 miles away. In my motor car, it is a few hours. <sighs> Sounds like a good idea to me. It's out of the question. But why? Dawn patrol. Oh, of course. Only English pilots would need to sleep when Sarah Bernard is on the stage and Miss Tanguette is at the Folie Berger. Oh, Alan, don't be a fool! You're issuing a challenge, Captain. A challenge? Certainly not. I'm merely trying to find a common interest which will serve to cement a good relationship. Alan. You have your machine to repair before morning. Oh, no, 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 please. My mechanics will see They are strange engines. They'll need supervision. There is nothing strange to them, Captain, about the Rhone engine. It is a French engine, so I think my French mechanics will manage very well without supervision, don't you? Then get is always good for my morale. She needs a good night's sleep any day. You did enjoy yourself, yes? Yes, I did. Thank you very much.
So much for your Andekas that keep their side of the lines, Captain. You have discovered otherwise? Not only was he flying over our side of the lines, he was also the finest German pilot I've ever encountered. I'm lucky to be alive. Then I think you have met my friend. My friend, because at least I too am still alive. Well, you might have mentioned it. I understood that you were experienced in fighting Eindekers and needed no advice from me. Would you like some coffee? Thank you. God, I'm tired. Eindekers. Flying over our side of the lines. In a sector where nothing is happening on the ground. Well, don't you find that a little odd? Captain, I think it is good when pilots shoot down enemy machines and leave strategy to those who are trained in such matters. Bonjour, monsieur. Madame. Oh, qu'est-ce que c'est? Un petit souvenir, hein? Beaucoup de médailles. Beaucoup de Monsieur le Capitaine. <laughs> she means well. No doubt. That joke's wearing a bit thin. No need for that. Come in here quickly. I said quickly. Sense of humor, but your English sense of direction isn't too hot just at this moment. You're on the verge of the what the fox. What the fox? I don't think the flying corps ever lost its word. Well, no, they don't. I'm the exception that proves the rule. Unfortunately, if I 
I read my map correctly, I wouldn't have strayed this side of the lines and got myself shot down. Damned unfortunate old boy. Yes, you're telling me. Oh, hello. So, I, uh, I suppose there's no chance that you're trying to get through to the French lines, eh? Yes, it happens, I am. Well, uh, seeing as you seem to know the way around this countryside rather better than I do, there's a... Uh, no chance that I could tag along, sir. I'm sorry. It'd be better on our own. Yes. I understand. Well, I'd better introduce myself. Galen. Charles Galen. Galen? What have I said? Yes. Yeah. I can see the resemblance. And you look at him. British ambassador at The Hague. What? 20 years ago. Mind you, I didn't know him very well. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> Here's my Uncle Henry. Well, that makes a great deal of difference. Paul, what's the winner? Pleased to meet you, Charles. This is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, if we met at the Cavalry Club or something, I mean, yeah. Well, one might say this place was even more exclusive. What? <laughs> well, you're trying to get to. Well, well, I suppose I have to rejoin my flight, really. I mean, they're stationed at uh, some small village called, um, uh, Verve Submers. I feel my French isn't nearly as good as your English. I had the Eindecker in my sights. I would have gained the victory, I think, but my gun jammed. Pity. I had lost heavily at Chemin de Fer the night before, and I was in need of the bounty. <laughs> bounty? What bounty? You don't have the same? One of our industrialists has started a fund so that each time a German machine is shut down, the victorious pilot can be rewarded. Without my bounties, I could not have bought my Rolls Royce. Ah, <laughs> but you're talking of German reconnaissance machines, lumbering two-seaters. Yeah, the Eindecker's another kettle of fish. Mm. A kettle uh, of fish? <laughs> he means your bounty's not going to be so easy to come by. No. We shall see. Well, I didn't have enough opportunity anyway from what I saw this afternoon. They're just crowding out on their side of the line. Mm. I mean, they're sort of forming up in a kind of air barrier, almost. Oh, have you any idea what they're up to? What about you, Captain? Have you uh, many kills to your name? Personally, no. Well, I should count me. You have assisted your commanding officer, Scott? Um, I shot Mr. Farmer down. It's a long story. You shot him down? Mm. I was flying an Eindecker. Really? An Eindecker? How was that? Well, I was shot down on the enemy lines and I managed to get my hands on an iron decker and made my escape. So. <laughs> Bravo! It would have been most interesting to have had an iron decker in Allied hands. But you shot him down. Unfortunately, yes. But tell me, how did this uh, iron decker handle? Mm, beautiful. Well, compared with the BE2, anyway. Very light, you know, flimsy almost. But, um,. Wasn't quite good enough to lose Captain Triggers. And uh, you shot him down? Yes, I think we have established that by now. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me, I should not laugh. But I think this time you have kicked the football into your own goal, eh, Captain? <laughs> Very good. Ah, la belle Marielle. Let me pour the coffee for you. You certainly live very well in the sector. <laughs> oh, yes, we know how to look after ourselves. La vie douce, you know, the gentle yes. life. <laughs> as happy as God in France. The exact expression, a German saying, isn't it? Yes, I believe so. They are right to be envious. Only the French know how to enjoy themselves. <laughs> Do you think the French know how to defend themselves as well? Why not? I was thinking of Louis Napoleon's army when it surrendered at Metz and Sedan. No, thank you. Not all that far from here, of course. But that is history. You should read more about what our modern generals are thinking. I have. That's what disturbs me. Why is that? I was thinking of one of your generals in particular, head of your operations branch until recently, the sort of stuff he preaches. What stuff? All this rot about... Not bothering about enemy intentions. 
the quasi-mystical rubbish of desiring assault by the bayonet, the conviction that wars can be won armed with glory and a row of medals rather than with sound strategy and efficient weapons. You think we lack efficient weapons then? Do you think your B2, for instance, is more efficient than our French machines? Perhaps not, as far as aeroplanes are concerned. Perhaps not. Certainly not, I think. And your artillery, have you a field gun that can match our 75? I think you must move out of your glass house, Lieutenant, before you start to throw stones. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite safe. Oh, well, in that case, I entirely disagree with you. Because as far as I'm concerned, there is simply no place in the world like Paris. I mean, it's culture. Music, literature, it's girls, art. Everyone only has to consider names like, um... Renoir. Um, Renoir. Manet. Manet. Monet. Yes, exactly. And good food. Fromage. Ah. Followed by some French brandy. But for all that, we... We're so restless, we're so busy. No, give me an English summer day. Cricket, the village green. <laughs> A pint of good English beer. Oh, I don't know. You may well be right, but... I know we're such a crowd of muddlers. Never seem to hit anything exactly right, you know. Well, only has to look at our aeroplanes. They're absolutely pitiable. Yeah, aeroplanes aren't all that important, Sean. Yeah, when you're up there with a nine decker, I'll be whatnot, I can tell you. Still, we will be singing the praises of La Belle France. I have to be on my way. I didn't know you were a gay Leon when I said that. I didn't know I could trust you. Well, I'm not a bad shot. I don't know. I didn't know how to keep my head down. You may be able to help me. Of course. I'll do anything I can, naturally. Yes. I think I must trust you. Can I? You do trust me, Uncle Henry, wouldn't you? I have intelligence that is of the utmost importance to France and the Allies. Because you're a gay Leon. Because I believe I can't trust you. I think it's my duty to tell you what I know. So that if I am not able to cross the lines, you'll be able to pass on the information. Do you understand? Voila! Oh, vous êtes très gentil, madame. Oh, je vous en prie. Et aussi quelque chose à vous montrer, monsieur le capitaine. Oh, thank you. What? Regardez. A linoscope? Well, I can't see anything. Comme ça. Comme ça, comme ça. No, still can't see anything. Must be. I think she has given you a medal, Captain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> medaille, eh? Oui, une belle medaille, Monsieur le Capitaine. Une belle medaille. I don't get it. The German 380s will bombard the city, and the two tens will cut the trenches like a knife in the stomach of a mackerel. At the same time, their long-range artillery will bombard towns. Railways, tracks, even footpaths. Every line of communication to the front will be attacked. When the first bombardment is over, the infantry will move out of their underground shelter and attack. Without first taking forward trenches? They will have no need of them. But surely, I mean, these underground shelters are more than half a mile back from the front. If the infantry attack without forward trenches, I mean, <laughs> they'll be cut to pieces by the French 75s. They'll be absolutely slaughtered. I don't think so. There won't be many 75s left after the first bombardment is over. So if they attack without first digging the trenches, then there'll be absolutely no warning. I mean, there'll be absolutely nothing for the French reconnaissance machines to see. Precisely. And when the attack gets through, my countrymen will rush to shed their blood in the name of glory. The Germans are no fools. They know our character. They know it will be a matter of national pride to us never to retreat from our positions on the Meuse. They'll simply bleed us to death. Sean Hero underrating the intelligence of the high commanders. I sincerely hope so, believe me. But you don't know the French as well as you might. All we can think seriously about our stomachs. Our stomachs! Probably our women. Being a bit harsh on your countrymen, would you? Perhaps. It's just that I fear for them. Well, come on. Let's make the report. Travel as far as we can by night.
Germans up to something big, sir. I'm so. Michael, how many times do I have to tell you? Very wild statements. They're useless. If you'll please, please just bear with me, sir. All the way along here, all the way along, mm. there is artillery, not just the light stuff, not just 77s. I saw 130s, 150s, 210s. Camouflaged, of course, but once you know they're camouflaged, they're easier to spot. Mm. And I saw earthworks, too. Where? Mostly about half a mile back from the Allied lines. Mm. I can't be certain of this, but they seem to me to be some form of underground shelters. You have all the grid reference positions? I was flying at very low altitude, you see. Also, further back, here in the wider forge, there's what seems to be a new railway line. They fell down a lot of trees. It stops abruptly right in the middle of the forest. I can't be certain of this either. But there seems to be an emplacement for one of those big bertha guns. With the far power I saw, they could flatten the whole of this area within two days. As far as I'm concerned, it can mean only one thing. An offensive, a massive offensive, yeah. bigger than anything so far. I think perhaps you are excited to see an enemy position for the first time. <laughs> the first time? When we've been flying from St. Marie for the past... Don't you see? This explains the build-up of German air activity. They're filling the skies with iron deckers so your reconnaissance machines won't see what's happening on the ground. Filling the skies? <laughs> you know what I mean. It is all rather dramatic, if you don't mind my saying. All the same, that is my assessment of the situation. Did you see any forward trenches? No, there are none. Captain, would you like to give this officer a lesson in modern trench warfare, or shall I? Michael, they have to dig jumping off trenches within two or three hundred yards of their lines, otherwise the infantry have to run too far. Well, that's the theory. And you saw no forward trenches? I have already said! No, I didn't. We know all about these earthworks, these gun emplacements. The operations branch at Chantilly is kept informed of every development. But until forward trenches are dug, there is no danger of an attack whatsoever. C'était parfait, merci. Votre service, monsieur le Seventy-five shell, isn't it? What off the off the driving band there? Um. <laughs> yes. Let me see. Button. German button. Um, Allemagne. Um, oh. <laughs> right there. Yeah. That's that. It's special. Hmm? Uh, your boyfriend. Uh, votre ami. Is it? No? George Guinemay. Oh, Guinemay. Yes, I've heard of him. Yes, one of your pilots, uh, votre pilote. Yes, is that right? Fascinating. Et vous? Souvenir? Oh, no, no, not having my hair. Please? Look, I'll Souvenir? tell you what. I'll tell you what. That's no, all right. It's one of my buttons. There you are. Jeff, huh? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> no, madame. Um, I Chambre, tout de suite! Oh. Vite, vite, vite! Madame, you don't understand. Um, my. Oh, my French. Oh, God. Tu vas rester là! Yes. 
Went up to look at the forts. What's this, a dairy? I feel an urge to record our bumbling stupidity for the benefit of future generations. What bumbling stupidity is that, then? Tales out of school. Do you know, I never realised there were so many forts around here. This is one of the key areas of the French defensive system. Well, for the war against the Prussians. And this war. That can't be right. Of course it's right. I know it's right. Well, the forts around here have got no guns. No guns? None that I could see. No men, either. Deserted. Are you saying that the child's mother is telling an untruth, Captain? She was mistaken. The girl simply wanted a souvenir. She's no longer a child, Captain. And you took advantage of her? Oh, absolutely. Oh, don't be absurd. So damn pompous. Captain, I have seen you look at that child the first day you arrived here. I have seen you follow her with your eyes every time she enters the room. Her father was killed in the war. In the very first days of the war, when you, no doubt, were still playing cricket in England. She is troubled. She needs a father and you. I think the sooner we receive permission for your flight to return to Saint-Marie, the better it will be for you and for the people of verve sur -Mers. You are not wanted here anymore. Because of Mr. Starling, of course. That too, yes. I have no wish to hear any more of his views on the strategic situation. Thank you very much. What do you want? Oh, sir. Hmm? Breakfast. Oh, come in. What is Bonjour. it? Bonjour. Good morning. The forts in this area, Mr. Farmer says they're unmanned, deserted. Yes, they're out of date. But wouldn't they make excellent defensive positions if this area was attacked? We are not in the Middle Ages, Lieutenant. We fight in trenches these days. Forts are nothing but shell traps, and the guns are needed elsewhere. But surely you see the danger after what I reported yesterday? Lieutenant, neither you nor I are on the general's staff. We do not have all the information available to us. We do not have the grand picture. It is not for us to draw strategic conclusions from aerial observations. Captain... Be silent, please! Captain, I think if instead of your pilots losing their way, crashing their machines when they land, criticizing the French high command, and seducing 16-year-old girls... Don't mention that again, I think Captain. it will be better if you were to concentrate on what you were sent here to do. Trying to shoot down Eindekers. Get your flying gear, Alan. That is exactly the point. They will not be using forward trenches. There'll be absolutely no warning, don't you understand? Now, I've committed most of the important artillery positions to memory. Now, it is essential, do you realize that? Essential for this information to be got through to your generals just as soon as possible. Do you believe it now? Oh. I have believed it for some time. Yes. Until now, we had no proof. If a detachment of French pilots came to your airfield, Lieutenant, criticized your staff, ridiculed your strategy, and suggested that your generals are fools, I think you would disagree with them. I think you would rise in defense of the good name of your country 
and the royal flying curl. <laughs> Would you not? Yes. I would. demander de nous donner sa force parce que nous en avons peut-être besoin plus qu'en temps de paix durant les agitations et ces temps difficiles de guerre lorsque le désespoir menace de nous engloutir tous tournons-nous vers lui pour la force Get your drink. We've shot down an Andecker. Well, I must congratulate you on your victory, <laughs> Captain. Thank you. I regret I must also inform you that your Andecker crashed on the Church of Our Lady. Madame Tamonier is one of those who died. I think you will agree that your flight cannot remain here any longer. I have sent an urgent request to my authorities and expect approval for your departure within a few hours. Uh, whatever they think of us, we must attend the funeral. I'm also pleased to inform you that your Lieutenant Galion has arrived safely. He's upstairs. Very nice. Qui in tenebris et in numbra mortis sedent, ad dirigentos pedes nostros in viam pacit. Anime eis et anime omnium fidelium defunctorum per misericordiam dei requiescant. Ah, uh -huh.